Good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, Sunday morning service. I know that it's right on the number, but I think the time is to start. So please, uh, yeah, I think everybody's sitting there now. So <laughs> that's great. So um, let's stand and sing, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. Please be seated. I'd like to remind you this morning who you are as we start our service. And uh, Matthew 5, verse uh, 13 to 16 actually uh, reveals who you are. Okay, let me read for you. Verse 13 says, You are the salt of the earth. Did you know that you are the salt? Metaphorically, you are the salt of the earth. But if Salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? And it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. And verse 14, And you are the light of the world. A city set on hill cannot be hidden. Can you see that? You are beautiful light of the world. That because of you, that God is protecting this world. Verse 15 says, No, do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on stand, and it gives light to all in, his house, in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works, and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So you are the salt and you are the light. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for the reminder this morning that you called us, we are the salt and the light. Please help us to preserve this world with, with your goodness, with your strength, with your power and guidance. And also, Lord, if there is a darkness, please help us to shine your light. Your light through us that will shine in the dark area. 
will give a light. Lord, we thank you that you brought us here together this morning, that we can worship you. As we worship you together this morning, please help us to significance of our worship together in this room, what it means to us, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Second song, it is, it is well with my soul. So please stand.
the time for announcements. to get on Google and Google things, have a Google, that's incredible him to find the history of it. Um, yeah, there's a few, a few things uh, <coughs> needs to be mentioned for this week. Uh, community management, as far as I know, is still going to happen um, by Zoom on uh, Monday night. Tomorrow night, Wednesday, well being Wednesday, Friday, the prayer meeting, uh, followed by TPK <coughs> at 1 3 15 to 5 15. Um, once again, the official announcement to election of New Elder, Craig Russell. Um, I'll let you read that and um, continue to pray for Craig as well and also for. For the other elders at this time. Um, seeing what else there is, there's a few, few birthdays. Robert put an interesting thing on the back of the bonds and uh, APWM News uh, when you can't find the words, five fish, and it's basically done through global recording. I won't, um, I won't go reading all of it now, but it's worth having a look at. And there's a couple of um, websites you can go on to <coughs> to find out a bit more about it as well. Um, what else is there? Um, three birthdays. Uh, Barbara Wundell, Nari's birthday. Um, yep, down there. Um, and Andrew Summerfield, too. I think these three are. Or familiar with most of us, so I'll just um, pray for those three. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you. We pray for Barbara and Mary and uh, Andrew. We pray that um, you continue to guide them and, and direct their, <coughs> their ways, that they remain faithful to you and that they really know and love your son Jesus. We pray their birthday will be a special day for them as well. Um, in your son's name. Amen. And I think it's Trish. No. No, it's not. It's the mission spot slide that Jan's not here, so oh. maybe people just want to have a read it. Yes, I'll put the slide up. <laughs> She was going to be doing a talk on SRE, but it's still <coughs> have a read of that. for the uh, Sunday school to the scripture teachers. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do pray for people who are involved in SRE. It can be a challenging time <coughs> at times. And we do pray that they are able to get the message about your son Jesus across clearly and powerfully as well. We pray for the Teacher that it's got, um, um, it's got <coughs> going through cancer this time, that you would be with them and may they feel your presence and your power <coughs> with them as well. Uh, in your son's name, Amen. Before Enid comes, uh, read the Bible. Let's let's pray for the uh, collection. Uh, dear Father, we thank you for your gift to us. That in everyday life, Lord, we we have a house that we live, and 
and we have clothes that we're wearing and we have a food that we are having Lord every day. Please help us to recognize that it is they are from you Lord and we are blessed. And this time we took some portions of the gift for your kingdom. Lord we pray that the communal management will use wisely for your kingdom. We pray in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. It's in it, right? Reading the, the first five reading from Judges 18, 1 to 19. In those days, there was no king in Israel, and in those days, the tribe of the people of Dan was seeking for itself an inheritance to dwell in. For until then, no inheritance among the tribes of Israel had fallen to them. So the people of Dan sent five able men from the whole number of their tribe, from Zorah and from Eshtel, to spy out the land and to explore it. And they said to them, Go and explore the land. And they came to the hill country of Ephraim, to the house of Micah, and lodged there. When they were by the house of Micah, they recognised the voice of the young Levite, and they turned aside and said to him, Who brought you here? What are you doing in this place? What is your business? <coughs> and he said to them, This is how Michael dealt, Micah dealt with me. He had hired me, and I have become his priest. And they said to him, Inquire of God, please, that we may know whether the journey on which we are setting out will succeed. And the priest said to them, Go in peace. The journey on which you go is under the eye of the Lord. Then the five men departed and came to Laish, and saw the people who were there, how they lived in security after the manner of Sidonians, quiet and unsuspecting, lacking nothing, that is in the earth and possessing wealth, and how they were far from the Sidonians and had no dealings with anyone. And when they came to their brothers at Zora and Eshtel, they, their brothers said to them, What do you report? And he said, Arise, and let us go up straight against them, for we have seen the land, and behold, it is very good, and will do, no, do nothing. Do not be slow to go to enter in and possess the land. As soon as you go, you will come to an unsuspecting people, and the land is spacious, for God has given it to your hands, a place where there is no lack of anything that is in the earth. So 6,000 men of the tribe of Dan armed with weapons of war, set out from Zora and Eshtel, and went up and encamped at Kiriot-Jerom in Judah. On this account, that place is called Mahanehdan to this day. Behold, it is west of Kiriot-Jerom, and they passed on from there to the hill country of Ephraim, and came to the house of Micah. Keep going. That's it. Oh no. And then the five men who had gone to scout out the country of Laish said to their brothers, Do you know that in these houses there are an ephod, household gods, a carved image and a metal image? Now therefore consider what you will do. And they turned aside there and came to the house of the young Levite at the home of Micah and asked him about his welfare. Now the 600 men of the Danites, armed with their weapons of war, stood by the entrance of the gate, and the five men that were gone to scout out the land went up and entered, and took the carved image, the ephod, the household gods, and the metal image, while the priest stood by at the entrance of the gate with six hundred men armed with weapons of war. And when they went to Micah's house and took the carved image, the ephod, the household gods, and the metal image, the priest said to them, What are you doing? And they said to him, be quiet, put your hand on your mouth and come with us and be to us a father and a priest. Is it better for you to be a priest to the house of one man or a priest to a tribe and clan in Israel? Okay, third song that we're going to sing is a stand up, stand up for Jesus. Please stand up. <laughs> <laughs>
Please be seated and time for champions. Just 
need for food and clothes. And something else. Do you know what that is? Look at the other thing is we might need. Standing up in church, prophesying. Some. Yeah, yeah. coming to church. Coming to church, singing. Yes, that makes me. Some people don't like singing, singing believe it. But I like singing, so that makes me feel close to God. Coming to church and spend time with all people in God's family. Okay? So they're the ways that we can get close to God. I'm going to pray for us now. Heavenly Father, thank you that you know us better than we know ourselves. You know what we need. You know, when we need it. And we thank you for providing it for us. And we do pray for that we would seek to know you more and more, that we would understand more about you every day. And that um, we would be content and happy with the things that you give us and trust that they are the best things for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Trish. Now that we come to uh, our uh, main prayer time, I know um, a lot happening at the moment. COVID is real and sickness is real and the flu is real. and So I think there are many uh, prayer points. So I'd like to ask you to pray what's in your heart and uh, in a moment of silence uh, we'll finish our prayers. So let's bow our head in prayer. Lord God, we thank you for the, uh, the last number of children that were here this morning. Um, we thank you now that they are now receiving further instruction and guidance from the Bible. We thank you, Lord, that there are teachers who are available to uh, speak to them. Lord, please prepare their hearts and minds to hear uh, the message for them this morning. And Lord, we do continue to pray for our church, um, that more families will come along uh, and, and grow this church here in Wollongong. Father God, we continue to uphold Cindy before you, Lord, as she's um, far away from her family, but with her parents at this time. We just pray that you will give her strength to um, cope the days ahead and that you'll have wisdom in the way that she's able to, um, to support her, her mum and in the way that she has to deal with her dad at this time with his. Um, acceptance or perhaps not quite uh, an acceptance of the illness that he's suffering. So we just pray for your blessing upon Cindy at this time and her sister Lord. We pray too for uh, Jan and for Betty 
who are isolating at this point in time, just pray, Lord, that uh, they may not be sharing with us in worship today, that they would know um, uh, of your presence with them. And we just pray that uh, they'll uh, get strong very quickly and be able to uh, come out of their isolation with uh, very little or lasting effects. We think of any others, Lord, who are not with us today because of illness at this time of the year where there are so many flus and viruses going around. We just pray, Lord, that they will get full health care and that they will be um, strong and well again and able to join with us again very soon. In Jesus' name we pray. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, I'd like to bring our um, brothers and sisters, the staff at Mount Lennon Christian College, um, past and present staff, who tragically lost the next student during the last week. Um, and we thank you that we've all been able to be a part of um, that amazing young man's journey. And I really particularly pray for his family and friends, especially his parents during this devastating time. And um, we know we can trust that you bring, uh, you can bring good from all circumstances, Lord, and we just pray for uh, comfort um, and support for his family and friends. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the confidence that you bestow upon us, Lord. We come to your presence, throne of grace, with the confidence that we can bring our prayer points and petitions before you, Lord, and you will answer. Lord, we pray that we continue to um, trust you, no matter what circumstances arise in our daily life and in our life, now and in the future. Lord, we come before you and we bring our prayers before you that, uh, with the confidence that you will answer our prayers. Lord. And we thank you for our church family. Lord, uh, this morning, wherever they are, Lord, please be with them. Give them comfort and the strength and protection. And also, Lord, in this room, Lord, as we come and come worship you, please help us to worship you in truth and in your love. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, next Bible reading is 1 Timothy chapter 6, and John uh, is going to read for us. notice it's a lot shorter than the one Enid had, so I apologise Enid, you've got the long one, I've got the short one. <laughs> um, so it's Timothy 6, verses 6 to 12. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if, you, if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. For those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, fall into, into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is at root of all kinds of evils. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. Um, but as for you, O man of God, flee these things, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called, and about which you made a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Thanks, John. Um, next week, we're going to finish the book of Judges, actually. Hooray! <laughs> it's, um, judges, I think uh, you know that it's very contemporary book. A lot of uh, happening, terrible thing happens in the book of Judges. And I think all of that, what's in the book, is happening right now. 
in this world as well. And next week, particularly, it's going to be most, um, how do I put it, most disgusting story in the Bible. It's a horrifying story. And that's why next week, and Karen is going to read the Bible, just going to read one verse. <laughs> because chapter 19 and 20 and 21, and I think that's absolutely outrated. And I like, to, I like you to read before you come to church. Uh, because if children here, I don't want uh, Karen to read that book because um, it's, it's a horrifying story. So please read before, chapter 19 and 20 and 21. And uh, Karen just will uh, read one verse. <laughs> yeah. Okay, before we uh, look at today's passage, let's pray. Lord, we thank you and praise you for the book of Judges, Lord. It's a reminder to us that it's a contemporary. Whatever happens 3,000 years ago, it's still happening in the world. And also, sadly, desperately, it's happening in the church as well. Lord, we pray that as we look at this passage, Please help us to understand so we are able to apply in our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. What is, what is the energy source that makes you keep going at the moment? Life is difficult. And uh, when I talk to my uh, friends like you know this one and people laugh at it, they say life is a sucks. Life sucks, terrible, difficult, and uh, what's happening over in Korea with my father-in-law and Cindy's going over there, and and um, actually uh, the result is not that what she expected. It's more difficult than she expected. I think ten times more because of dealing with emotional and uh, situations and uh, human sin and all that. So, if you are in that situation, or if you haven't been, if you haven't been, you will be. So, in those difficult circumstances, I ask, I like to ask myself and you that, what is the energy source that makes you keep going? When this kind of situation happens to you, difficult situation, what is your strength? And what is my strength? Where can I get my energy? What is the energy? What is the source of my energy? And I'll tell you, it's the Word of God. Word of God. I think the tapio got right. Word of God. The Bible. The Bible. In any situation, what is the most important thing to remember for us is that we have the Word of God. Because simply we have a God. And God told us, and God gives us a sufficient source and knowing, so give, He gives us energy. A few years back, a few years back, uh, in America, people were concerned about dictatorship by Trump. And lots of people are asking this question, wow, this man is very strong, right? What if he became a dictator? And the people ask this question, do we have a system that prevent him not to be dictator. And during the lockdown, I spent some time studying about social science, apart from uh, my usual routine. So, I uh, studied about it, and John Mitchum, uh, the American historian, explained about the situation, about the dictatorship in America. And I was fascinated by uh, his answer. He said, his answer was, do you know Frank, uh, Franklin Roosevelt, FDR, he made the U.S. out of the Great Depression. He is a hero. And the people were literally craving for the hope. And people want him to be a dictator and rule America and lead America. And uh, the people want give him the total power. But, American Constitution doesn't allow that happen. Because, because in the Constitution, 
John Calvin's total depravity of sin is in the Constitution. What that means is we are all equally sinful men. We are all simply, sin, simply sinful people. So one man can't have a total power because of that. And that's the foundation of Australian Democrat as well. Simply because he's a sinful man. Doesn't matter how good he was, he can't have a total power. And his answer was, Trump can try. I know that he tried, but he can't be a dictator. So that was a John Mitchum's answer. I think that was a brilliant answer. And this is the answer for us. That is the foundation of our church. We are all equal. Did you know that? We are all equal. No one is above than anybody here. No one is below than anybody here. We are all equally sinful before God. But by the blood of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Through Jesus, that we have a relationship with God. That is our foundation. So can you see how dangerous is doing what is right in their own eyes in the book of Judges? And it is often the same thing, doing what is evil in the eyes of the Lord. And we have seen Micah a couple of weeks back and his mom did what was right in their own eyes. I think that is the ordinary people's example of their lives. What was right in their own eyes, they did. And how about Levite, a religious leader? Is he any better? Is he different? Surprising enough, it was Moses' grandson, Jonathan, was leading the perverted worship, idolatry, in Micah's home that we can see today in Dan's, the tribe of Dan. Everyone, not just one or small group or large part of Israel, no, it is everyone. Verse 25 says, in those days, in those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. And that reminded me of Romans chapter 3. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. There is no distinction. We are all equal. Verse 23, for all. Okay? Not just large or small or one person, it's all, everybody in this world, in this room, we all have sinned for sure of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift through, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Everyone, all. Today, we are looking at Danites. So let's look at where is the tra tribe of Danites. Uh, that is in the map. You can see that. The tribe of Dan in the top tribes of uh, Israel in here. So they got the land. They have their land. So what is happening in their minds? They're supposed to be in their land. Then why? We already read. In a red us why they were searching for the land to live. God already gave the land to live. Isn't this clear? Do you know the answer why they are searching for? The answer is simple. Because they did what were right in their own eyes. The word of God is not impacting them at all. That is what is happening. Idolatry, idol worship, perverted worship. And led by Moses' grandson, Jonathan. So I'd like to ask ourselves this, this morning the question. Are we worshipping God in the right way? And um, Acts 2, 42, it is clear that, I think I read um, this one literally uh, thousands of times, and they, the Christians in the early church, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship and breaking of bread and the prayers. Devoted. What does devoted mean? Devoted in Greek really means you give up important things in your life for the most important things. So what are the most important things that you have to give up everything? Is apostles' teaching and the fellowship, breaking of bread and the prayers. 
And I think this is four sermons right there to preach. And I believe I did many times. And I'm planning to do again, actually, uh, in a very short time. And you can measure your spirituality according to that. Have you given up important things for the most important things? The Word of God. And your church family. Fellowship simply means to treat each other like a family. And to the breaking of bread, that's what we're doing today. And the prayers. And the verse 1, Judges 18 says, In those days there was no king in Israel. And in those days, the tribe of the people of Dan was seeking for itself an inheritance to dwell in. For until then, no inheritance among the tribes of Israel had fallen to them. If you don't have a home, if you don't have a place to live, I think that is a big trouble, right? House, food, and clothes, they're the basic needs for the humanity. And they found the trouble and they were desperate, simply because they can't find a home. I think that's understandable. They sent out five spies and came to Micah's house and found the Levite. They seemed to know him, actually. They seemed to know him and recognize him. So let's read from verse 2. So the people of Dan sent five able men from the whole number of their tribe. And from Jorah to the Ethel, Ethel, to spy out the land and explore it. And they said to them, Go and explore the land. They came to the hill country of Ephraim, to the house of Micah and Lodz there. Verse 3. When they were by the house of Micah, they recognized the voice of the young Levi. So probably that he is a famous one, Jonathan. And they turned aside and said to him, Who brought you here? What are you doing in this place? What is your business here? And he said to them, This is how Micah dealt with me. He has hired me. I have become his priest. This is funny. This is funny. What are the chances for them to find the land? Their home. The Danites. Okay? Spies and all that sounds familiar. But now in here, in the promised land, Okay? What are the chances for them to find the land? Their home? Zero. Why? Because God already had given them where to settle. We saw that in the map, right? But why? They just ignore it. Just ignore what God said. That No, no, no. I like to do what I like to do. We have to ask ourselves the question that when the Bible says something, is that us? Is that me? Is that you? Ignoring God's will? Are you just waiting for your time that your will and God's will matches together? Or are you trying to twist the arms of God and get what you want? Or just doing what is right in your own eyes? This is a big question. How to listen to God? How to listen to God? And my simple answer is, have you ever led, have you ever read the Word of God actually? Have you ever actually spent the time to listen to Him? We are so busy with the trivial things. So busy with the trivial things that we don't spend the most important things, actually. We are so good at ignoring the will of God. Danites didn't like where God told them to settle. So they tried to find a place for themselves. They are seeking their own will. So here you are. You are at Micah's house. Guess who is telling them what to do? Give a permission to do. Jonathan. Jonathan was telling them what they like to hear. Grandson of Moses. It is like a down of the spiral. If you were in Jonathan's shoes, what would you say? The answer would be different. Jonathan told them. 
the tribe of Dan, the five spies, exactly what they want to hear. Verse 5 and 6. And they say to him, Inquire of God, please, that we may know whether the journey on which we are setting out will succeed. And the priest, that's Jonathan, say to them, Go in peace. The journey on which you go is under the eyes of the Lord. Corrupt the people. Corrupt the priest. Everybody is corrupt. Five men left. And verse 7. Then the five men departed and they came to Leash and they saw the people who were there, how they lived in the security after manner of the Sidonians, quiet and unsuspecting, lacking nothing that is in the land possessing the wealth. And how they were far from the Sidonians and had no dealings with anyone. They were saying that they are easy target and they are living outside of the promised land. They are peaceful people. They are not the people God told them to remove. They are not in the promised land. But they are targeting them outside of the promised land. They are in the promised land, but now they are targeting outside of the promised land. What are you doing, Danites? What are they doing? Why they are going backwards? They are in the promised land, but they are not going out the promised land. And verse 8. To what do you report? What do you report? And verse 10 says, As soon as you go, as soon as you go, you will come to unsuspecting people. The land is spacious, for God has given it into your hands, a place where there is no lack of anything that is in the earth. What do you think of this situation? All what is happening in here is happening around us, isn't it? And rush back with the 600 men, steal and set up their own way to worship, defiance of the word of God, but they got what they wanted. And they got the dream land, dream home. They did all of this in the name of God. Wrong, right? They got what they wanted and they say, this happened because of God. The land is spacious, for God has given it into your hands, a place where there is no lack of anything that is in the earth. For God has given it into your hands. No! They can't say that. They can't say that. But they, uh, they did anyway, because they satisfied their evil desires. I believe we all have our dream land. Right? When you have it, would you say it is God's will? Do you really know that it is actually the will of God, what you have? Or you just say because you did what is right in your own eyes. That's questionable a lot of times. And here is the challenge, the big challenge for all of us. What is our dream land? Do we know that that's the will of God? So many times, so many times I heard that we love each other. Then I saw what they were talking about was, I love you as long as you don't disturb me. That's not the definition of love in the Bible. Desire to love, desire to serve, but as long as you don't disturb me, I will do that. No, no, no. no. God's way is unlimited. And Trish pointed out to us that during the kids' talk. We become like God. Because we are made in the image of God. We are capable of doing that. Why we can't do it? Because of sin. They were not worshipping God at all. Even though they use the name of God, they are not worshipping God at all. 
They were just using God to get what they wanted. At the first place, why Micah hired Jonathan? If you're looking at verse 13 of chapter 17, it says, Then Micah said, Now I know that the Lord will prosper me because I have a Levite as a priest. Can you see that? Prosperity. Prosperity. There is a deep down in our hearts, in our lifestyle. Prosperity. Just think about it. I'm not free from that. I'm not blaming anybody. But we all searching for the prosperity. And if we do all of this, work for God, okay, I, will be, I will be blessed. Now our society is divided by how much money you have. That determines the status of you, actually. And Jonathan was a subject to the better offer with the tribe of Dan, Dan again. That is a prosperity. And tribe of Dan looking for a place, that is a prosperity. They were happy with the land that God had given them to live. So instead of preparing for themselves to live in the land, they ran the race and they risked another tribe, another people, to find, to find their dream land. And said, this is a blessing of God. You can do whatever you like to do. And you can be whatever you like to be. Sounds very modern, doesn't it? Very modern. Ethnic cleansing. To get what you wanted. Okay? But that's okay, because God is with us. Isn't this the man of God? Our priest Jonathan is with us. So we can do whatever we want, and we get, and we can get rich. We got his blessing. Revelation 7, 4 to 8. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of it, the numbers, but just the looking at the, the, the tribes, the perfect, the, the tribe, like the people in the tribe, the seal. If you're looking at from the verse 14, or verse 5, the okay, tribe of Judah, tribe of Reuben, tribe of Gad, the tribe of Asher, tribe of Naphtali, tribe of Manasseh, tribe of Sinian, tribe of Levi, tribe of Iscar, tribe of Zebulun, tribe of Joseph, and tribe of Benjamin were sealed. Okay, that's the book of Revelation. They were sealed. Who is missing? Who is missing? There is no tribe of Dan. Wow. Can you see how serious that it is, actually? So what Judges 17 and 18 are all about? What's the solution? How can we solve the problem of Micah and his mom's problem, and the Levite problem, and the tribe of Dan, their problem? And the author of Judges actually asking this question first, what is the ultimate solution? For this answer, you can get everything what you wanted and you can be the loneliest person in the world. And you can be the poorest person in the world. But you have nothing but you can be the richest person in the whole universe. What gives you the meaning of life? Are you wrapped around the kids, your children? I can tell you, kids will grow and live in you. Now I can taste it. Cindy in Korea, and I thought that I have to look after my kids. You know what? They are looking after me, actually. <coughs> it's a good thing, but I feel really like a strange. Like a cookings and you know, cleaning toilets and the vacuums. I'm not doing any of that. They are self-sufficient. And I think, wow, they are ready to move out. <laughs> And house, as soon as, soon as you build, you know what? It will need a repair. Sooner or later. You work, your career, you know what? You will be replaced. And uh, one of my friends is in a good position in a big company. And he is really, really worried about every day. Because he will be replaced soon. And people are lined up for that. Ministry? You'll be taken away, right? 
in the proper time. And health, doesn't matter how much you spend your money on your health, right? We're going to getting old, right? Actually, uh, on Monday, my optometrist told me that I need a reading glasses. I'm 51. I thought, wow, reading glasses. I thought that never gonna come to me, but now I have to have that. Your body, your looks, doesn't matter how many Botox you have, we all getting on. Money, it's the same thing. But you know what? One thing, one thing, we have it. All of our church family have it. One thing never be taken away from us, we have it. Did you know that? Do you know who He is? It's a Jesus. And later on, the Micah running down chasing his idols when he lost it. And verse 24 says, He said, Micah said to the Danites, when the Danites took all the stuff, You take my gods and my maid and the priest and go away. And what have I left? How then do you ask me, what is the matter with you? And the people of Dan said to him, Do not let your voice be heard among us, lest the angry fellow fall upon you, and you lose your life with the lives of your households. Micah, did he, lost, did he lose God? No, he only lost what? Idols that he made. And he's chasing after that. And he said, I have nothing. This is a stupid, this is a funny, sarcastic way. And this is pathetic. You wrote my idol? You wrote my God? Now Micah saying, where can I go? I lost all my hope. What do you live for actually? What do you live for today? One God, He will never leave you and me. He will never be taken away from us and never leave you, never forsaken you. Where else can we go except Jesus? They didn't have to make all these troubles. They didn't have to make Micah and his mom and Levites and the Danites. You know what? There is a perfect solution. There, there is a perfect solution actually. What is the solution? If they just followed what God told them to do. They could live in harmony. If they just go and worship in the house of God. They have it. They have it. They have it. But they're ignoring God. And they did what was right in their own eyes. And they caused all of this trouble. But they have it. They have the house of, the house of God. And they have a priest. And they could meet together in one place in the house of the Lord. And living in harmony. They didn't have to have all these troubles. But because they did what was right in their own eyes. And we saw the consequences for the last three weeks. And this is quite a stunning picture. They could have been in one place in the house of God and living in harmony and worshipping in God harmony and happy life together. And like that, did you know that? We have one place to meet and live together according to the will of God. Did you know that? We have one place to meet and live together according to the will of God. Do you know where that is? I wouldn't say it's church building. I would say it's Jesus. Meet around Him. The Word of God. That's what we are doing today, this morning. Let's pray. Dear Father, 
one place that never be taken away from us and one place that we come together and worship you get everything right for our lives is Jesus Lord this morning please help us to see that and please help us to focus on that Jesus help us to draw near to you and through him please help us to draw near to each other Lord this morning as we partake Lord's Supper communion as you commanded Lord Holy communion please help us to see the reality of our life what do we live for if it is not about your son Jesus please help us to get perspective about our life and get it right this morning that we can focus and we can give up important things for the most important thing for your son Jesus we pray in Jesus name Amen that we're going to sing Behold the Lamb Please stand. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
So with thankfulness and faith we rise to respond and to remember our call to follow in the steps of Christ as His body on earth. As we share Christ, the communion table is a table of our Lord Jesus. When I think of this communion that we partake today, it is like a wedding ceremony every month, actually. Just remembering the covenant relationship with God through Jesus. They're remembering that we are made in the image of God because of our sin, that we have a broken relationship with Him. And through Jesus who died for us, for our sins, and through Him that we have a relationship back to God. And that is a reminder that we have the covenant relationship uh, with each other and with God. And I always call that on behalf of the session of this congregation, I therefore invite those who love Jesus Christ and the members in good standing of this and another congregation to join in this celebration of Lord's Supper. And in the Presbyterian Church, the eldership team it is important that we examine and we know um, what to do together in the unity. So let's hear the gracious word of Jesus. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find the rest for your soul. Let's listen to the words of institution of the Holy Supper in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Please uh, listen carefully. For I received from the Lord what I was passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in worthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord, eats and drinks judgment on himself. Let's pray. Almighty and everlasting God, it is indeed our duty and delight, always, everywhere, to give you thanks and praise. In the beginning you created heavens and the earth, and everything in them you made us in your own image and your tender mercies are of all your works. Mighty God, Heavenly King, we magnify and praise you. Almighty and merciful God, we know that you love us so much that you gave your only Son, Jesus, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We bless you, his holy incarnation, for his perfect life on earth, for his precious suffering and death upon the cross. 
for his glorious resurrection from the dead, for his ascension to your right hand and the way it ever lives to plead our cause and for the promise of this coming again and for his gifts of the Holy Spirit. Remembering, therefore, the life and the work of our Savior Jesus Christ and the pleading his perfect sacrifice of one sacrifice offered once and for all on the cross. We do this in obedience to his command. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, we are still with the COVID. So we set it up the communion table in the back. And our elders will serve you uh, in the back of the room. So please take bread and the grape juice together. So you, baby, uh, Craig, you can start to go and Hassan, you can start and follow and come around. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took a bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Christ has died. Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. Let us pray. Dear Father, you have greatly loved us and mercifully redeemed us, and now you have fed us and strengthened us in your table. Give us grace that in everything we may give ourselves, our wills and our works, as a continual thank offering to you. May we live in peace, and the fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ and rejoice together in your eternal kingdom. And please help us to gather around your Son Jesus. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Time for benediction. May the grace of Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let's enjoy morning tea together.